Right, so welcome back. And you, uh, if you're watching this, you already made it further along than somebody who might have been saying that they wanted to learn Houdini for the past five years and they haven't gotten to it. Well, you have because you're watching this. So uh, awesome. So anyway, what I'm gonna be uh, talking a little bit about uh, in this video is data. And essentially data and handling data is what makes Houdini so awesome. So let me just get into that a little bit more. So I'm going to give um, give an example that involves other 3D programs. If you haven't used any other 3D programs, don't worry, but this will just be an example. So let's say you're using Cinema 4D and you have Cinema 4D and you have a whole bunch of plugins and well, all of these plugins do super cool stuff individually and but now you kind of want to make those two work together. Or you want to use, for example, uh, a part of, of MoGraph that's already there, but it doesn't really work super great with some, some plugin that you have or some other part of the program. In order to get this to work together, you kind of have to hack because none of these parts are sort of meant to work together. So you have to sort of generate hacks and you cannot fundamentally just have it interface properly because it's all black boxed assets. They were made maybe by some developer 10 years ago that has long la like uh, that has long been gone from the company and nobody knows how it all works and it might be some yeah the decrepit part of the of the software and you just have to sort of hack it together and that's how that's the workflow in a lot of different programs in Houdini that's completely different in Houdini everything you do is just fundamentally just taking data somewhere and then just applying it somewhere else. And then you can do manipulations on this data in the meantime before you apply it somewhere, but that's essentially is what you're doing. All well, of those other programs might also do that, but they do it under the hood and you don't have access to all of the stuff they do. They just What they do is just allow you to sort of press a button and then press another button and press another button and you get some effect. In Odini, you don't use these buttons, you make the buttons and then you get the effect. So this is a fundamentally different way of thinking. So what I like to compare it to is Lego. So I made this comparison before um, on my uh, Us by Night talk that I did last year. So if you want to watch that, you can watch it and we'll put the link in the description. Um, but essentially what I mean by that is, let's say you have a whole pile of Lego and you have never played with Lego before maybe. Now, you might, you don't, probably don't really know what, you, what you're doing with all these Lego bricks. I mean, you've never played with it, like, but you, you, start, you start playing with them. So you start putting some stuff together and you start, well, you start like making little structures. So you start with some basic structure, and you get some other bricks and you click them together and you, and then you make a house. And you're like, oh, but now I have this house, but I can use the same bricks to make another type of house. And then you make the same bricks and I make a car. Well, but you use the same essential building blocks to make a house, make a car, and then you make an entire city. And then before you know it, you have, you have this whole big city and all of these, these cool uh, interconnected parts. And this, you can kind of compare these, um, these Lego bricks with Houdini nodes. So Houdini nodes are kind of the same. You can just imagine a, a Houdini node being a Lego brick. You can just connect it to another node and another node and you type a little bit of a script there and you do a lot of uh, like a bit of a thing there. And then you end up with, well, with something. And all, you, all you've been doing is just connecting the same type of stuff together to generate something. So it's very similar to those Lego bricks. And another thing that I kind of want to address is um, a lot of people think you have to be some kind of a coding mastermind in order to do Houdini. Well, I can kind of debunk that because if you don't want, there's very little coding that you have to do in Houdini. There's, there's a couple of scripts that you do need to use generally here and there. Don't worry, I will be covering those in the course as well. But a lot of stuff you don't need code. Um, it's just that some stuff is just easier to do and faster to do in code. What I will be doing in this course is I will be uh, showing a lot of examples on how to do something with notes, and then I will be showing how to do it with code. Then you can make up for yourself what you find easier. 
Some people who might have a coding background, for example, if you are more of a DD type and you do a lot of Python, then, then the whole coding aspect of it might make more sense to you. But if you have a more of a design background, you probably rather work with these nodes. So I'm going to, uh, a lot of stuff that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show both the way with nodes and both the way with codes. Uh, and then we're just going to work our way through it like that. And you can sort of make up your own mind on what you want to do. Um, but you don't necessarily need need code for a lot of stuff. So that's something I just wanted to put out there in the case that coding intimidates you. And But also during this during this course, you will see that actually some of these basic codes are not that bad. It's actually not that hard. So who knows, you can just make up your own mind when you're, uh, when you're watching this. So what we'll be covering in the next uh, couple of uh, episodes is essentially just like what different types of uh, data there are, just parts of, of an object where you can put data on because there's a difference between points, primitives, vertices, um, and you can put all data on these different elements and I will be explaining how that all works and then we'll start actually um, using that data and use it in several different uh, uh, places and then we'll really start, well, like knowing how we can work with this, all this stuff. But yeah, we're gonna be learning how to uh, how to build our stuff with these Lego bricks. So yeah, super excited. So let's dive into the next video. And the next video will be uh, yeah about the uh, fundamentals of working with data. So hopefully I'll see you there. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. So see you in the next video. Thanks guys.